Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, more on them at the end. The Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3 is a budget-friendly gaming laptop with a lot to offer for the money. Mine has the 6-core Ryzen 5 4600H processor with NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti graphics, but there are other configurations available including Intel-based. You can check out those and updated prices linked in the description. It's got an all-black plastic build. There's definitely some flex due to the plastic, but the build quality feels better than the cheaper Nitro 5 I recently tested. We're looking at under 4.8 pounds or 2.2 kilos for the laptop alone, then right on 6 pounds or about 2.7 kilos total with the 135 watt power brick and cables included. The size is decent for a 15 inch gaming laptop, not super thin or anything, but not huge and still portable. The smaller footprint allows for 6mm thin screen bezels on the sides. It's got a 15.6 inch 1080p 120Hz display, and it's got FreeSync with a 60 to 120Hz range, which is nice to see. I've measured the the screen's average gray to gray response time at around 15 milliseconds. Ideally we want to see 8.33 milliseconds for a 120Hz panel like this. Unfortunately I haven't had too many other 120Hz laptops for testing, but it is at least faster than the 120Hz screen in the ASUS G14. I've tested the screen with the Spyder 5 and got 63% of sRGB, 45% of NTSC, 47% of Adobe RGB, and 47% of DCI-P3, so colors are on the lower side. We're looking at 266 nits at 100% brightness, below the 300 or so I like to see, making it a little dim, and with an around average 880 to 1 contrast ratio. Backlight bleed was fine even in this worst case test, just some minor glow patches that I never noticed when viewing darker content, but this will vary between laptops. There's a 720p camera above the display in the middle with a physically sliding privacy shutter, no Windows Hello support. This is what the camera and microphone look and sound like. This is what it sounds like to type on the keyboard. And this is what it looks like if we close that privacy shutter. The keyboard just has a single zone of blue backlighting which illuminates all keys and secondary key functions. It's got two levels of key brightness or can be turned off with the function and space keys. Personally I preferred typing on it over the Nitro 5. The keys were a bit more clicky with 1.5mm of key travel. Here's how it sounds to give you an idea of what to expect. I like that the arrow keys aren't small and instead are pushed down a little to make space. The power button is separate from the keyboard and is just above it in the middle. The precision touchpad is a smooth plastic, it clicks down anywhere and worked fine. Fingerprints and dirt show up pretty easily on the matte black finish, but as it's smooth it's easy to clean with a microfiber cloth. On the left from the back there's the power input, gigabit ethernet, HDMI 2.0 output, USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port, no Thunderbolt, 3.5mm audio combo jack and status LED. The right just has a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port and air exhaust vent, so no cables getting in the way if you're a right-handed mouse user. The HDMI port connects straight to the Nvidia graphics. The Type-C port does not offer display output, and Type-C cannot be used to charge the machine. The weight distribution was good, allowing for one finger opening, and by default the laptop will power on when you open the lid, but you can disable this through the Vantage software. There's nothing on the back other than subtle IdeaPad text, as air is instead exhausted below the screen, and there's nothing happening on the front. Underneath has some air intake vents towards the back above the fans. You need to take out 10 Phillips head screws to get inside, and the four down the front are shorter than the rest. Once inside, we've got the battery along the front, 2.5 inch drive bay on the left, two M.2 storage slots, Wi-Fi 5 card in the center, and two memory slots to the right. This model I bought in Australia shipped with 16 gig and dual channel, but the US one just lists 8 gig, so it could be single channel. Although the SSD installed is a smaller size, there's room for a longer drive, but the second slot only fits the smaller option. The two 1.5 watt speakers are on the left and right sides towards the front. They sounded okay. I'd rate them about average, no bass and a bit tinny. Better than the Nitro 5 though. They're not super loud at maximum volume, but loud enough, and the latency mon results were alright. The IdeaPad is powered by a 3 cell 45 watt hour battery. I've tested it with keyboard lighting off, background apps disabled, and screen at 50% bright. The results were quite good considering the size of the battery, lasting for more than 6 hours in the YouTube playback test, beating Lenovo's L340 from last year with the same size battery two spots below. Let's check out thermals next. 
The Lenovo Vantage software lets you pick between three performance modes, which from lowest to highest are quiet, balanced, and performance. But there's no use of fan controls. None of these modes apply to any overclocks to the GPU, and I didn't find the Ryzen controller software to make any performance improvements in the higher performance mode. The idle temperatures were good with a 21 degrees Celsius room. Stress tests were done with the Ada 64 CPU stress test with stress CPU only checked, and the Heaven GPU benchmark run at the same time, while gaming was tested playing Watch Dogs 2. With the stress test running, quiet mode is the warmest due to the lower fans, then balanced is a fair bit cooler, completely acceptable. Performance is only a little warmer as it performs better, but still under 90 degrees on the processor. Then the cooling pad helped lower temps a bit more. Interestingly, when gaming in quiet mode, the temps are way down. This was because the GPU seemed capped to 300 megahertz, so the game was basically not playable. I'd write off playing in quiet mode entirely due to this. Otherwise, best case, we're looking at almost 4 gigahertz over all six cores sustained long term for the CPU. We can see this in the power levels the components are running at. Quiet mode with the game running is way down, again, basically unplayable. So not sure why the stress test workload was unaffected. Outside of that, the 1650 Ti had no problems running at its 50 watt limit. Here's how CPU only performance looks in Cinebench with the GPU now idle, so not too big of a boost going from balanced to performance. It's only just slightly behind the Nitro 5 in both single and multi-core score. However, the Nitro did benefit from Ryzen controller. At stock, it was around 300 points lower. So purely out of the box, the Lenovo does perform better in multi-core workloads. When idling, the keyboard was around the low 30 degrees Celsius point, which is pretty normal. With the stress tests running in the lowest quiet mode, it's approaching the 50s on the left. WASD felt fairly warm. Balanced mode was a little cooler, probably due to the fan speed increase. Then in the highest performance mode, it's pretty similar. Warm but not hot. And we can see the hot air exhausting onto the screen on the right. Let's have a listen to those fans. I could hear the fan and hard drive at idle. Quiet mode does what it says on the box. Then balanced and performance were about the same, and were quieter when compared to a lot of other gaming laptops I've tested in the highest performance modes. Now let's check out how well the IdeaPad Gaming 3 performs in games and see how it compares with other laptops. I've tested Battlefield 5 in campaign mode at ultra settings, and the IdeaPad is highlighted in red. Interestingly, it's a fair bit behind the ASUS TUF A15 with the same CPU and GPU combination two spots ahead of it. This is only my second 1650Ti laptop though, so not too much else in the way of direct comparison yet, but at least it is above all of the 1650 results. These are the results from Far Cry 5 with ultra settings in the built-in benchmark. This time the idea pad was ahead of the tough, so it could just be a bad result in BF5. It's also beating the 5500M in the Alpha 15. Granted, that machine does also have the much worse 3750H processor. Otherwise, it's a bit of a jump up to the next tier, being the 1660Ti Max-Q. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was also tested with the game's benchmark tool with the highest setting preset. The tough with the same CPU and GPU was a couple of frames ahead, so nothing major, but still, it's ahead in two of the three games we've compared, at least in terms of raw gaming performance anyway. Speaking of a couple of frames, that's the same amount the IdeaPad was ahead of the cheaper Nitro 5 with 1650, so not all that different. If you want to see more results, I've tested the IdeaPad Gaming 3 in 22 games at all setting levels. Check the card in the top right corner or link in the video description. Now for the benchmarking tools. I've tested Heaven, Valley, and Superposition from Unigen, as well as Firestrike and Time Spy from 3D Mark. Just pause the video if you want a detailed look at these results. I've used Adobe Premiere to export one of my laptop review videos at 4K. This test benefits from QuickSync from the Intel machines, which is why the IdeaPad is one of the lower results here. Though interestingly, the cheaper Nitro 5 with lower 1650 was a little faster. I've also tested Premiere, but with the Puget Systems benchmark, which also accounts for things like live playback rather than just export times. In these tests, a higher score is better, and the IdeaPad was again slightly trailing behind the lower spec Nitro 5, but was a little ahead of the tough A15 with same CPU and GPU. The results were similar in Adobe Photoshop. This tends to be more of a CPU focused test. 
but it's now a fair bit behind the Tough A15 with same specs, while the Nitro is even higher. DaVinci Resolve is more GPU heavy, but despite the apparent benefit of the TI being a higher spec, it's scoring the same as the lower Nitro 5, and only just 5 points behind the Tough with the same hardware. I've also tested SpecViewPerf, which tests various professional 3D workloads. I've used Crystal Diskmark to test the 256GB NVMe M.2 SSD. The speeds were alright, but nothing amazing. The one terabyte hard drive seems to have decent speed for a 5400 RPM spinning rust drive. For updated prices, check the links in the description as prices will change over time. At the time of recording, in the US it's actually sold out. Too much demand for Ryzen I guess. Here in Australia, we're looking at 1400 Australian dollars, though I picked mine up on sale for under 1150 Australian dollars, which without our taxes is around 750 US dollars for my international friends. The Intel model is in stock in the US for 800 US dollars, though just a quad core i5 there. Now let's summarize the good and bad parts of the idea pack gaming 3 to help you decide if it's a gaming laptop worth considering. Overall, I think there's a lot of value here for the money. But that said, in many games, the performance isn't all that much different compared to the $670 Nitro 5 with non-TI-1650, so paying the extra for the TI alone doesn't seem worth it. The screen in the IdeaPad is a little better, higher refresh rate and faster response time, but color gamut and brightness is similar and on the lower side. The IdeaPad does have FreeSync though. The plastic build quality is a little better here, but still pretty average, and I did prefer the keyboard of the Lenovo. Thermals are good, but that's just a side effect of the specs not being high powered. It doesn't run hot and performs good in any case. Battery life was good considering the smaller battery size, and that seems to be a side effect of Ryzen, as most Ryzen gaming laptops I've tested do well here. Speaking of Ryzen, the CPU performance on offer is next level here compared to what was available at this price point less than a year ago. It's good to see that Lenovo are giving us two memory slots for dual channel memory now as the older L340 it replaces only had the one. So all things considered, I think the IdeaPad Gaming 3 is a solid improvement over the L340, but it's hard to say if the benefits are worth around $70 or so over Ace's Nitro 5, especially if you're on a tight budget. In that case, the Nitro might be the way to go depending on your needs. Now for more information on our sponsor, Squarespace. By now, I'm sure you all know that Squarespace is a powerful online platform for creating websites, but did you know you can also purchase domains with free who is privacy and a beautiful parking page too. Squarespace also gives you easy to use analytics to see where visitors are coming from, what devices they're browsing with, and more useful page view trends. You can even create a community on your Squarespace site with the integrated comment system which supports threaded replies and likes. Go to squarespace.com slash jaredstack to build your website with a free trial and save 10% off your first website or domain purchase.